Well, Jason, I know you're back there uh, anchoring us at the studio, and we had a slight technical glitch here, but we're back on live. Uh, JT, are you with me? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, very good. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being patient with us there. I am once again broadcasting from the sixth floor of the Olive Tree Hotel right here in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, we had a marvelous tour again today. I know you know that we are in the land of Israel right now, uh, the a place where Almighty God chose to place his name. I'm talking about the specific city, the city of Jerusalem, uh, and also we have been on the Temple Mount itself, the specific 35 acres where God chose that he would put his name. You know, the interesting thing is, um, God is no more real right here than he is anywhere in the world. Because the Bible tells us that he no longer dwells in temples made with hands. So we know that wherever we are, God is there. Now that does not negate the fact that God has a physical people of God upon the earth, the Jewish people, and a spiritual people of God upon the earth, the church. Uh, the Bible tells us that now our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. There was a temple on the earth. Uh, there was the first temple from 968 B.C. until 586 B.C. Uh, that was recognized as the dwelling place of God, and then it was rebuilt from 516 to 70 AD, 516 B.C. to 70 A.D. It was known as the place where God dwelt, and yet a temple can't contain a God that fills the universe, that fills all space. So we have been here attempting to come to grips with the glory of God, with the greatness of God, the nearness of his presence. Uh, we were in the garden tomb today, stood in the tomb where Jesus spent three days and three nights. And as we were there, realizing the power of what happened, I was standing there very near where it is believed that Jesus was crucified and the burial place is very near the crucifixion place. And as I stood there, it just hit me that I was standing where it all began. That uh, I was standing in the little small beginning of the greatest religion on earth. There are more people today who claim Christianity than any other religion. About 2.1 billion people claim Christianity. And Jesus made a statement. He said, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. Of course, Jesus was simply stating an obvious truth, and that is that uh, he was the corn of wheat, and except he was willing to fall into the ground and die, that he was just, he wouldn't even be remembered today. But because of the magnitude of what he did and the truth that he presented, you know, Pilate said to him, uh, they're accusing you of being a king. Are you a king? Tell me the truth. And Jesus said, to this end was I born, to bear witness of the truth. And Pilate, he'd been in politics way too long. He cynically said, huh, what is truth? I mean, he had reached the point. Uh, this was a man who was a governor. He was educated. He was politically ascending. And yet in his cynicism, he said, what is truth? I see it all the time. I see people that are well-educated, but they don't know what truth is. So perhaps they're not well-educated. 
Uh, I remember back in the early uh, times I, I read where our forefathers bought 20,000 Bibles early in the history of this nation because they wanted to put a Bible in every school. They said, you can't possibly claim to educate children and young people without educating them in the Bible. You know that's absolutely true. Here in the United States of America, we have now basically banned the Bible from our schools. And yet our forefathers said, that's folly. Uh, you can't even call it education if you ban the Bible because the Bible is the source of truth. All the time I'm seeing it, even during this trip to the Holy Land, I'm seeing what happens uh, when they make archaeological discoveries. The whole world is so shocked that things are being discovered now that prove the Bible to be accurate, the most accurate history book in the world. We were down in the city of David a couple of days ago, and we were discussing the bulla, the seals, of two governmental officials under King Zedekiah way back around 5... 86, 587, 588 B.C. They recently, in an, an archaeological dig, found these two seals that these governmental officials used to stamp papers in order to show they had official approval. Well, those two men are mentioned in the book of Jeremiah, and their bullas were discovered with their names, the same names that are in the book of Jeremiah. And we have no accurate historical records back 550, 560, 570 B.C., except the Bible. You know, for years, the critics said, oh, the book of Daniel couldn't possibly be accurate because um, there's no king in all of history by the name of Belshazzar. And there's this chapter in Daniel that talks about this man, Belshazzar, that had this impious feast and the handwriting came on the wall saying, meaning, meaning, people, you farce and you're weighed in the balance, you're found wanting. Tonight your kingdom will be divided between the Medes and the Persians. They said there's no Belshazzar in history. Therefore, the Bible is wrong. Well, um, just less, about 100 years or so ago, they were digging in the area of Babylon, and they came across a cornerstone that said unto Nebuchadnezzar, the bone of his son, and Belshazzar his grandson. And so there was a Belshazzar, so the Bible was right, and yet the history books were wrong. So it's so incredible when we see how accurate the Bible really is and how lacking sometimes the history books are. And I've been reminded of that all over again. And we've gone from one site to another here on this trip to the Holy Land, how amazingly great God is and we live in a time when there are a lot of people that are really arrogant, that are wise in their own conceits. Uh, the Bible even says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Well, the Bible says you have to be a fool to say there is no God. Uh, because how did everything get here? I know we've got these uh, theories that there was a big bang and things just happened. But, uh, you know, I've never really produced anything very productive with a big bang. I've destroyed some things. I've had a couple of automobile wrecks that certainly created chaos, but I've never created anything constructive with a big bang. I mean, some of these scientific theories, I just laugh that anybody believe they can happen. I mean, the theory of evolution. Um, you say, well, there was a amoeba 
in the Mediterranean Sea, and it split and became a protozoan, and then it developed life from there, and it made its way up until finally it became a reptile. And, well, the reptile needed to get out on the land, so it developed lungs. Well, I started something I can't finish in this segment. You listen to Politics and Religion. I'm broadcasting from the sixth floor of the Olive Tree Hotel in Jerusalem, Israel. Maybe you've listened to politics and religion for years, and every time you hear us talk about End Times' free weekly e-newsletter, you say to yourself, today is the day I go to endtime.com and sign up. But the teacher from school calls, Junior's sick, your husband texts you a picture of the mailbox that Susie ran over while learning to back out of the driveway, and as you try to get out of the door, your boss is waiting for that detailed report that was actually due yesterday. All of a sudden, convenience is not on your side, and now the e-newsletter is the last thing on your mind. We now offer an easy-to-use feature that is perfect for those of you that have little time to spare. Just text the word end time to the number 22828. It's that easy. Text E-N-D-T-I-M-E to the number 22828. That's E-N-D-T-I-M-E to the number 22828. For years, I've been interested in Bible prophecy, but never could find the truth until the day that I stumbled upon a radio show called Politics and Religion. Two of my questions that no one could ever answer were, who will be the Antichrist and will Islam ever control the world? The day I listened to Politics and Religion, Irvin just happened to be talking on this subject and recommended the DVD, Will Islam Rule the World? This lesson based everything on scripture and it gave me answers that I'd been seeking for a long time. Get your copy of Will Islam Rule the World? Call 1-800-END-TIME. Tired of the same old boring TV? Tired of the not-so-reality TV? We have the answer. Tune in to the exciting show that keeps you up to date with current events. Hope, meaning, answers. That is the message that Urban Baxter's End of the Age series represents. You can tune in every Sunday on Daystar at 10.30 p.m., Mondays on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., or tune in to TBN on Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. Get informed today. We are taking your calls on the program today. The number to call will be on the air with us, 877-END-TIME. If you would like to contact our operators, the number to call is 1-800-END-TIME. Of course, we still have our translation project ongoing. I haven't got today's record yet. I hope to get it shortly. But uh, just to say this, that we are uh, $32,000 away from our goal. Our goal is $120,000, so we've done wonderful. I just heard from the man who uh, made the pledge for the match grant, and he had been notified that we made the match grant. He was excited and is going to be sending that money in. So that'll that'll leave us $32,000 away, at least as of yesterday. We'll find out shortly where we are today. But if you want to help us, now let me make sure you understand what this means. Uh, and I want to. I hope everybody really gets this because this is, in my opinion, supernatural. It's of God, because in Daniel chapter twelve, verse number nine, Daniel prayed to understand his own writings. I mean, he had written the book of Daniel, prophecies for our time today, and he said, "God, I want to understand what this means." And God said, "No, go thy way, Daniel." These words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Now get this. In 550 B.C., God made a sovereign decision that he would place end-time prophecy in the hands of the end-time church. Why did he do that? Why did God say, all right, people will not understand these prophecies for 2,500 years. I mean, that's what he said. He said, these words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. We are understanding prophecies today that have never been understood before. For example, people have been saying for 2,000 years, the United States is not in the Bible. But of course, we have absolute proof that it is. 
many other things just like that. We here understand the prophecies now. Why? Because God decreed it to be so. Go that way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. So we put together a course called Understand the End Time. And in Daniel chapter 11, verse 33, it says, They that understand among the people shall instruct many. It's talking about the time that we're in right now, right around and before and during the time of the Antichrist. They that understand shall instruct many. So we've named our 14-hour explanation of Bible prophecy, Understanding the End Time. Do you know, if you go through these 14 hours in our Understanding the Time series, you will know more about Bible prophecy than a graduate from a theological seminary. By the way, you can have those for yourself, either in DVD uh, or in CD form, if, whichever you would choose to have. It's available to you right now. You can call our operators right now, 1-800-END-TIME. You will learn about the United States, other nations in the Bible. Uh, you will also learn about what the term New World Order means and why it's on the back of your dollar bill. It's there right now. If you don't believe me, flip it over. Look on the back. Under the pyramid, it says Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's Latin for New World Order. Novus is new. Ordo is order. And Seclorum is secular or world. New World Order right on your dollar bill. It's been there since 1935. Who put it there? Why did they put it there? What does it mean? I'll tell you what it means means for us today. Uh, in the lesson, the second lesson of the Understanding in Time series, the title of the lesson, New World Order, is world government. And it's not just any world government. It's the world government prophesied for the end time that the Antichrist will rule over in the very near future. And it's on your dollar bill. They've been planning it for a long time. Well, it's coming to fruition right now. Let me just let me just give you a sneak preview of what's going on. When President Obama wanted to go into Libya, did he go to the Congress and ask for a declaration of war so that he could use our military against Libya? No, he didn't, did he? Who did he ask? He asked the United Nations. And he got you in approval, and so we went. What's going on here? Are we already a world government? The answer is further than most of us would care to believe. And there is proof abundant. We've got another tape. Now, this is not part of our series, but it's a, it's a standalone tape. Uh, it's called World Government Forming Now. Every human being on the planet should see this one DVD, and it's available. You can get it for a gift of $20. And if you'd like to have it, uh, simply call our, our, our operator's number, 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. So this entire series is available to you, 14 lessons, uh, proof that Islam is in the Bible. I mean, this prophecy is so supernatural. It's amazing. And proof that the Holy Roman Empire was reborn on November the 3rd of 2009. Why is that important? Because the Antichrist and the false prophet will come out of the reborn Holy Roman Empire. I mean, we prove it all to the max. It's, it's incredible. And really, if you've never been through this series, you're really functioning with, with uh, blinders on. You have a blindfold on right now. As you're stumbling through the next few years, you just, well, you don't want to do that, uh, because this course will take the blindfold off of you. So if you don't have the Understanding End Time series, I would not go one more day. I'd be on the phone right now, because let me tell you, it will pull the blindfold off of your eyes. And not only that, but it's going to show you where the minds are. We're going through a minefield right now. If you haven't picked that up yet... We are entering some of the most dangerous times of all human history. Now, one of our DVDs is devoted to how dangerous that is. It's called World War III. The worst war the world has ever known is just ahead of us now. It could happen as early as two months, three months, uh, within the year or two. I can't tell you for sure. It could play out the five or six years, but 
it's more likely to happen between now and the presidential election. But the Bible says that this war is going to kill one third of the human race. Well, then we have an entire DVD devoted on the prophecy that specifically says that one third of mankind will be killed in this war. The Bible says it. So the most horrendous prophecy in the entire Bible, and almost nobody even knows it's there. But it is getting ready to happen, and it could happen yet this year. So I'm just simply telling you, you should not go through the next six months without this course. And I urge you uh, to order it for yourself. You can either order it online or you can pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-IN-TIME. Uh, or you can go to our website and digitally download these things, these lessons of the Understanding in Time course. But however you get it, just simply get it. It is that critical. Uh, it's that important. So I'm here in the Holy Land, and I'm standing in the Kidron Valley. The Bible talks about this is where the Battle of Armageddon will culminate. It will start up in northern Israel, but it will end with Israel's last stand here at the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And the Bible calls the Kidron Valley the Valley of Slaughter. Another place it calls it the wine press of Almighty God. I walked through God's wine press three days ago. Our entire group, we walked through God's wine press. Now, we were happy to be there then, but I don't want to be there uh, when God is walking through his wine press because the Bible teaches it's the wine press of the wrath of God. You know, you look around, you see all the evil in the world, and you think people are getting by. You see all the abortion. You see all of the immorality. You see all the people living together unmarried. You see all the divorces that should not be happening. Uh, you see all the homosexuality, you see all of the corruption, the lying, the cheating, the stealing. And you think, what's going on here? Well, let me tell you, the Bible says that people are treasuring up against themselves wrath that will occur on that day. The Bible calls it the day of the Lord, the day of his wrath has come. Well, I walk through the valley of the of the wine press of God, when the wine press of His wrath, He will walk. It. The Bible tells us that that's going to happen. I was there three days ago. Uh, I looked up at the gate that the Bible says in Ezekiel 44. That gate is closed. It is sealed up, and it will not be open until the Lord comes. Because the Lord hath entered in by it. Jesus entered into the eastern gate of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. And God, in order to dramatize the second coming, moved on a Turkish leader to go down and seal that gate. Because the Jews continually said, our Messiah is coming through that gate to save us. So he was afraid of that. He went down and he had his masons to plaster it shut. We took pictures of it on this trip. I stood and looked at it. The eastern gate. While I was standing in the Kidron Valley, in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, it's the same name. It's also called the Valley of Slaughter. As we stood there, I looked up at the eastern gate. I mean, I'm standing here at the crossroads of the new millennium. I'm standing here where the huge transition is going to take place. I just walked down from the Mount of Olives where Jesus Christ is coming back to. Now, you, you may wonder, why why is he so excited? Well, when you've been standing where I've been standing the last few days, and then today in the garden where it is believed that Jesus himself was buried and then rose again, the sign on the door said, he is risen. That's where the angel appeared and said, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. I'm talking about no wonder Christianity has shot to the top of the charts. And no wonder the Bible's the best-selling book of all time. 
I mean, there's nothing even close. There's not another book even close. And so should it be. Because the prophecies have come to pass so absolutely accurate that they become undeniable. I've had so many people say on this trip, people along with us, how could anybody doubt this? They said over and over again, how could anybody doubt this? Once they see this, they can't doubt this. Well, that's where we've been. We've been walking in wonderful places the last few days. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. 17 million, Shanghai, China. 13 million, Moscow, Russia. 20 million, Mexico City, Mexico. This is the population of just a few cities that currently don't have understanding the end time. But imagine the billions of people in places like Paris, France, Rome, Italy, Cairo, Egypt, and many other cities throughout the world that currently need the end time message translated in their language. Irvin Baxter has a burden to get the end of the age series, understanding the end time, translated into the eight major languages of the world. The translation project will take a total of just $120,000. If you'd like to participate in reaching the world with this message, call 1-800-363-8463. Your gift of one, 10, or $50 will make a difference. Call 1-800-END-TIME or visit endtime.com to help reach the world with the end time message. Do you ever hear the news and know that something's just not right? Do you ever read about politics and think what is going on? Maybe you wonder what all this means for you and me. Well, we finally have some answers. Irvin Baxter has a 12 lesson series called Understanding the End Time that has aired throughout the world on TBN and Daystar. This series contains lessons like United States discovered in the Bible, Islam and Bible prophecy, and the seven trumpets. The Bible says in Daniel 11:33, they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Would you like to be one who understands end time events so you can instruct your friends and loved ones? If your answer is yes, then don't miss out on understanding the end time with Irvin Baxter. Call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463 and request your copy of Understanding the End Time. Well, I got so caught up telling you about the Understanding the End Time series and all that it did, I didn't really finish what I was going to say because... Once we got this series all redone, we just updated everything, reproduced it, and we added four lessons this time, plus we taught all the original lessons brand new. Uh, once we get it all done, um, someone said, we need this in Spanish. I had so many Spanish people coming to me. Please produce this in Spanish. So I set out to do that. But all of a sudden, it takes a, a life of its own because someone says, well, what about French? We said, okay, we'll do French. And then other requests start coming, and I thought, well, you know, the United Nations publishes everything they do in six major languages. So if we truly believe this material is ordained by God for the end time, then we have an obligation to put it in all the languages of the world. And I thought, you know, I think that our listeners would support this. So that's the reason we set the goal and launched the translation project to put it in the six major languages of the world. Well, then someone called and said, well, it needs to be in Hebrew for the Jewish people. And I was so thankful they did. And the man said, I'm going to pay the whole thing for that. Each translation cost us right at $20,000. And so he wired us $20,000 from actually outside the country. Well, then he also wanted Italian and said he would pay half for that. Well, we now you have matched the match grant, and so now that's getting ready to happen. So here we are. Instead of reaching only the English-speaking people, which is where we were a few months ago, uh, that would be $1.8 billion, which is a wonderful thing to do. But now, all we have to do is $32,000 more, and we will have eight languages, counting English, 
which will reach 90% of the world's population, 6.3 billion. So we've gone from 1.8 to 6.3. So let's not fall short of this goal here. Uh, we're working very hard, but we don't want to run out of money. We will if we don't raise this. So if you're out there, uh, please, if you haven't contributed yet, please consider doing it. Ask God if he wouldn't have you to do it because God said this is the material that I want to put in the hands of the world for the end time. This is what they're going to need to know to know what the real truth is. So uh, if you'd like to contribute to the translation project, simply pick up the phone and call 1-800-END-TIME. Uh, that's 1-800-363-8463. Or go to our website. You can go there on our homepage. You can see the red button in the upper right-hand corner, the Donate button. Click it. It will take you straight to the translation page. You can enter in how much you want to give. So you've been doing wonderful. I appreciate it so very much. And uh, thank you for all that you are doing. Uh, it has been a wonderful uh, trip. And I think I've got an updated uh, message for you uh, as to where we are right now. Uh, I do have, actually. $79,057, so uh, we have gained once again. Uh, we have now jumped up about $700 from yesterday. So we're not moving fast, but we're moving. So thank all of you that have made that possible. We're now at 79000 plus when the 10 comes in, we'll be at 80000 That means uh, so another $1,000, and we'll, we'll have only $30,000 to go. So let's just make that happen. And, you know, maybe you can't give 1000 Maybe all you can do is 10 or 50 or 100 or or 500 or 200 whatever. It doesn't make any difference. But if you can't give 1000 that moves fast. Somebody may give 5000 10000 You know what you can do. You know what God has blessed you with. Whatever you can do, let's get this done because I want to fast-track this thing. I want this to be totally done, finished by January 1, so we can enter 2012. Now, here's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid the war is going to break out, and the very people that are going to be killed by this war won't even know it's coming yet because we haven't gotten their language yet. We are going into Chinese and into Arabic. These are the two peoples that will probably bear the brunt of this war. And God loves the Chinese people. God loves the Arabic people. Uh, you know, a lot of times we talk about the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, and we know that God has ordained for the Holy Land to be in the hands of the Jewish people. So it appears that we're prejudiced. But the fact is, God loves Palestinians just as much as he loves Jews. He loves Palestinians just as much as he loves Americans. He just has will a different will for the Palestinians than he does for the Jews. Uh, but the point is, it's not God's will that anybody perish. That's the reason we want this in every possible language that we can possibly put it in. And that's the reason we're doing what we're doing. So thank all of you that have supported this effort. We appreciate it so very much. Let's keep going. Uh, it's important. So that's what we've been doing. We've been walking through the footsteps of Bible prophecy. And as I was in the garden today and we were singing songs unto the Lord uh, about uh, his death, his burial, his resurrection, uh, Lord, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the, uh, you know, you, you came, you were born in a manger, you ended up teaching the truth, then you died on the cross, then you went into the grave, and then you rose from the tomb. I mean, God was standing right there where it all happened. And the, the wonder of it was overwhelming, and many of us were weeping because of what our Lord did, that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know the Bible says? You can be as righteous as Jesus Christ. Well, that's a disconnect. Me? Are you kidding me? I could be as righteous as Jesus Christ. I'm talking about you. you when you are born again, he imputes his righteousness to you, and he imputes your sins unto himself, 
and he's already died for your sins. So his death pays your sin bill because the soul that sins it shall die. That's the contract that ruled the human race. So when you're born again, your sins are imputed to Jesus Christ and his righteousness is imputed to you. It says this in Second Corinthians chapter number 5, starting about verse number 21. Uh, it says that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, you know, the Bible even says he will make you perfect. You say, wait a minute, nobody's perfect. Well, nobody's perfect without Jesus Christ. That's true. But Hebrews 10, 14 says, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Once you're born again, you're sanctified. And he perfects you forever. Now, that doesn't mean you're without flaw. That doesn't mean you can never make a mistake. What it does mean is the Bible says that his blood is able to perfect us as pertaining to the conscience. The Bible says there is therefore now no more condemnation. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Would you like to live a life condemnation-free? You can. It's a promise. Right there it is in the Bible. There's therefore now no condemnation. If you'd like to read more about that, I came across the scripture, He hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. And I looked at that scripture and I said, wait a minute, because I've been raised in church all my life. And all I ever knew was preachers step in the pulpit and say, anybody here perfect, raise your hand. And all of us sit on our hands because we knew we weren't perfect, right? And they would laugh about it. And yet, so I see that happen all my life, and yet I stumble across this scripture, Hebrews ten fourteen. He had perfected forever. Then they are sanctified. And I looked at that and said, wait a minute. I've been taught all my life. Nobody's perfect, but it says right here that God hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Well, that set me on a course of study. I wanted to know what that meant. And about a thousand hours later, I had written a brochure called You Are Perfect. Changed my life forever. Totally revolutionized my life. I've always loved the Lord, and I've always been happy being a Christian. But I was always a Christian who lived under condemnation because I just didn't understand what I had. But once God enlightened my heart, it's been wonderful. And since that time, I've done so much more for the Lord because I don't carry the baggage anymore. The Bible says that how much more shall the blood of Christ purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Once you get the guilt off of your back, it'll bring energy to you. It will enable you to serve the living God. The Bible specifically says we have been purged in order for us to be able to serve the living God. You talk about motivation. I don't even know what Blue Monday is. I mean, every day is a new day. Every day is a wonderful day. I actually had somebody say to me one time, don't you ever have a bad day? And I hated to answer them because I knew I wasn't going to give them the right answer, but I said, no, I never have a bad day. And it's not because I'm a superman or anything. It's because the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. Can you imagine in your life everything that happens to you working for your good? Well, that's what the Bible says happens once you're born again. And once you put Jesus Christ in the driver's seat of your car, of your life, if Jesus is driving your life, then how do you have a bad day? I mean, what would happen if every day you went out and Jesus was under the wheel? 
He's going to drive you around all day from responsibility to responsibility. You going to have a bad day? No. And the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. So there's a place for you to live. If you'd like the brochure, it's free. It's called You Are Perfect. And you'll have to read it through several times. This is not a shallow truth, but it's a marvelous truth. It will change your life forever. If you'd like to have your own copy, call us, one 800 in time Technology, technology, technology. I know what you're thinking. It isn't for me. Some I've heard say it's only for geeks. Well, not anymore. Digital downloading has become quite simple so that for all of us not so up to date with technology can do it with a breeze. Whether you're snowboarding in Alaska or climbing Mount Everest or just simply sitting with some friends who think they know all the answers to Bible prophecy. You can now download tons of products from all your technical gadgets. Don't even ask me to name them. Go to endtime.com day or night, and in a matter of minutes, guess who looks like a genius? Your friends will be speechless. Go to www.endtime.com. That's E-N-D-T-I-M-E dot com. Click on shop and you're in business. Don't delay, download today, and become a part of the End Time Geek Club. Death, destruction, poverty, war, disease. These are only some of the things that are ahead in the end time. Want to know more? Join us in reaching out and informing the world that over 2 billion people will die. We as a nation can't hide from this. We have to tell everyone we know about the prophesied war that will start from the river Euphrates. Call now to get your copy of World War III and spread the message that the end time is now. Call 1-800-END-TIME. Can't get enough of politics and religion? Well, neither can we. We have some great news for all of you Bible prophecy gurus. Think pre, no, not pre-trib, different subject, pre-show. Urban Baxter will be teaching the end of the age series. Here's what you do. Just log on to endtime.com slash radio Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central Time and click on the live webcast button. Cha-ching, more Bible prophecy. How confusing having a pre-favorite favorite show. We feel your pain. Call 1-800-END-TIME for more information. Well, I have just been talking, 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 but I've had a lot to talk about, and I'm talking about important things to talk about. Uh, If you do get the You Are Perfect, read it through. Now, remember, this is only really for those. Well, it's only for those that are born again. But it doesn't hurt for you to read it, even if maybe you're not born again. Now, while you're asking for you are perfect, you might want to ask for, "What do you mean born again?" Because that's the road to enjoying all the blessings and the benefits uh, that the Bible talks about. He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. You're sanctified when you're born again. So two free brochures, What Do You Mean Born Again? and You Are Perfect. I pick up the phone and call us right now, 1-800-IN-TIME, and request those two brochures. Uh, I think you also can request them, or at least I think they're available for digital download right on our website. Simply go to endtime, E-N-D-T-I-M-E dot com, and you'll see several questions there on your right-hand side. Uh, one of those questions is, What Do You Mean Born Again? And the You Are Perfect may be there uh, as well. I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's somewhere on our website. Uh, you just look for resources. You'll see the You Are Perfect. And so you can have it immediately. Uh, but I certainly would encourage you, read What Do You Mean Born Again? And then read You Are Perfect. Now, you say, but I don't think that's going to help me to understand all that you're talking about. Well, you may be right if you really want to understand we have a course called End Time University, six semesters. The first semester, 18 hours. The rest of the semesters, the other five, 13 hours apiece. And if you really want to understand your Bible, and you really want to understand the plan of God, I would encourage you. It's 83 hours of study. But when you're talking about eternal life, 
You say, well, I can never do that. You know, we do it for everything else. We do it for our career's sake. And so the first semester is only 18 hours. Maybe you need to take this in bite-sized chunks. Uh, it's called Understand the Bible. starts out with, why did God make a human being? What was the big plan? And God had a plan, believe me, and you're in that plan. So the first course is called Understand the Bible. And this is a lot of material, but we're offering 18 DVDs. Normally that would be what? That would, normally we charge $20 per DVD, $360. Guess what? $99. We're making it just as low as we can make it because... A lot of people say, oh, I just can't understand the Bible. I read the Bible. I tried to understand it. I just don't understand it. Well, you will. If you take the Understanding the Bible course, uh, you will understand the Bible. It will absolutely amaze you. You'll know why you're here. You'll know how you fit into God's plan. Well, I don't even have time to tell you. Uh, that's not the purpose of me talking about this. <clears throat> but if you want the Understanding the Bible course, pick up the phone. Call our operators right now. Just say, I want to get the Understand the Bible course. Some of you may want to get the entire university right up front. And there is a discounted uh, price for if you get the whole thing at one time. But whatever you do, if you get the Understand the Bible, make sure you get the workbook as well. Because there's quizzes at the end of every lesson. And you need to be able to pass those quizzes or else you're not getting it like you need to. So you may have to go back and listen to it the second time. Anyway, it's there for you. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ started the world's only true religion. Jesus Christ was the founder. That's the reason it's called Christianity. And I'm not here to slam other religions, but I, at the same time, have to tell you the truth. Christianity is the only true religion in the world. Jesus Christ said, except you believe that I am the Messiah, you will die in your sins. He said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except by me. He said, there's one door to the sheepfold, and I am that door. Anyone that climbs up any other way, the same is a thief and a robber. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the reason in our, in our end time university, we spent actually four semesters just studying the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, when I put this together, I spent 20 hours a week on each lesson. And so I taught one hour. I studied 20 hours. I taught one hour. And by the time I was finished with teaching the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, I made up my mind that I had no right to omit anything. We studied all the prophecies about his coming, how he fulfilled those prophecies to the dot of the I, the crossing of the T. And then we studied about his birth, his childhood, what little bit we know about it, the beginning of his ministry, his miracles, every word he said that we have recorded, all of the parables that he taught, and then what the parables mean. I mean, we harmonize Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We put it together. If you go through the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, that semester, three, four, five, and six of our end time university. I think you'll come out loving Jesus Christ. I don't think you can know him without loving him. I think you'll come out loving Jesus Christ, and I think you'll understand what he really can do in your life. I know this, this radio program today is a little bit of a departure from norm. But I've been walking in the Holy Land, and I stood in the Garden of Gethsemane today. And I surveyed the place called Golgotha, the place of the skull. And I walked into the tomb today, where 
Many people believe that that is the tomb that Jesus Christ spent three days and three nights in. But it didn't stay there. I looked at the channel where the stone rolled back and forth when you wanted to roll away the stone. The tomb I was in was a dual tomb. It was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. He had built it for him and his wife. It was a rich man's tomb. It's a cave hewn out of stone. The Bible says it was a rich man's tomb. The wife portion never was occupied. Jesus Christ occupied the other portion of the tomb. There's no bones in this tomb because he's not there. He is risen. I mean, that's what I did today. I guess that's the reason I can't quit talking about it because Jesus Christ is really the way, the truth, and the life. Well, I see a caller is coming in. However, I'm uh, we're right up against the end of our program, so uh, I think I better just wrap it up here. Uh, and thank you for calling in, but please call back tomorrow. Uh, I'll be with you tomorrow from Tiberias. We leave, leave from Jerusalem. This is our sixth night in Jerusalem. Wow, what a wonderful six days it has been. Uh, we will be baptizing the Jordan River tomorrow evening. Uh, several of our travelers have asked to be baptized in the Jordan River, so it's going to be a wonderful time tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to Tiberias, the city of Tiberias that existed 2,000 years ago. It's there right now. Uh, we're going to be going to the plain of Megiddo. We're going to stand on the city of Megiddo, looking out over the plain of Megiddo, where the Battle of Armageddon will begin. Uh, we're going to Capernaum, where Jesus Christ, where he lived. We're going to Nazareth, where he spent his childhood before he moved to Capernaum. So I, I may, be, may be back like this tomorrow. I may be overwhelmed again with the majesty of this marvelous salvation. You know, the one writer said, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? You say, I don't believe he rose from the dead. Well, there were 500 people that he appeared to at one time. If you had 500 witnesses, if you were accused of murder in Dallas, and you had 500 witnesses that said you were in New York City at the very time that murder occurred, there's no jury in the world that would convict you. And so we have evidence. I mean, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. They put a Roman legion of soldiers about the tomb to make sure he did not rise from the dead because they realized he had foretold he would. They said, lest his disciples come and steal him away, we better put a, a soldiers around the tomb. Well, an angel appeared, rolled back the stone, smote the Roman soldiers, made them fall over backward. They lay there pinned to the ground. Jesus came out of that tomb. They went back and told their, their masters what had happened. They paid them large amounts of money to keep quiet. But one of them told his wife, and she told her friend, and the news got out. And then he showed up. He showed up quite a number of times. For 40 days, he showed himself alive with many infallible proofs. We have the written witnesses of it today. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He is the Savior of the world. Listen, if you want to have your own copy of Understand the Bible, call us right now. One of in time. If you want to help with the translation project, Call 1-800-IN-TIME. God bless you all, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Politics and Religion is a production of End Time Ministries. We are a daily one-hour broadcast dedicated to bringing you the prophetic fulfillments happening every single day. If you would like to listen to archive programs, subscribe to End Time Magazine, find a prophecy conference, 
order in time products or subscribe to our free weekly e newsletter. Call 1 800 end time or go to endtime.com and take advantage of everything that the website has to offer. To be a part of End Time Ministries, partner with us and help this message go to the entire world. End Time Ministries is a partner-supported ministry. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our loyal partners and listeners for helping make politics and religion and in time ministries possible. If you'd like to have a copy of today's program, you can obtain it by simply calling us at 1 800 end time, or you can go to our website, www.endtime.com. You can either order the physical product from there and it'll be shipped to you, or there's also a place there for you to digitally download it and you can have it within minutes and be enjoying it in the privacy of your own home. In addition to this offer, let me remind you, this is one lesson in our Understanding the End Time series. The first one is the United States in the Bible. The second one is the New World Order is world government. The third one, Islam and Bible prophecy. The fourth one, World War III. The fifth one, Israel's God-given destiny. Number six, Israel, God's prophetic time clock. Number seven, Holy Roman Empire reborn. Eight, Antichrist and the false prophet. Nine, 666, Mark of the Beast. And number 10, the coming one world religion. I think a lot of you are going to want to have all 10 of these marvelous prophecy lessons. If you go through just these 10 DVDs, each of them one hour, you are going to know more about Bible prophecy than the average student graduating with a degree from a theological seminary. We need to know where we are right now. Jesus Christ said, I tell you these things before they come to pass so that when they do come to pass, you might believe. So the number to call one more time, 1-800-END-TIME, that's 1-800-363-8463, or go to endtime.com. You can now have all 10 brand new Understanding the End Time DVDs filmed in End Time's new cutting edge studio with green screen technology and beautiful full screen graphics. All 10 hours are just 155. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME right now.